Today I want to take a look at SQL Server and how to synchronize data between two tables. Here we have a temp database with two tables, one named states and one named states temp. The idea here is that you have data coming into a temporary table and you need to merge it with your final table. So here we can see that our final table, named states, contains four fields, name, abbreviation, capital, and population. It has zero rows of data when we execute that query. Our second table, states temp, is fully populated. Here we have 50 rows of data with a name, abbreviation, capital, and a population. So we have a primary key along with three data attributes. We're trying to merge this together and take all of that information from the temp table and synchronize it into the final one. This scenario comes up with scheduled data refreshes where you're bringing an external data source into a temporary table and you need SQL to reconcile and merge. Luckily, SQL has some efficient ways of doing that that we can lean on inside of stored procedures. You might look at client-side with PowerShell, JavaScript, or .NET to do the same, but it's more cumbersome, it's happening remotely, and SQL Server gives us some native features that are really good for matching up data. So let's go ahead and take a look at that stored procedure. We're going to do a create to a new window. And here you can see we have insert, delete, and update. So the idea is that almost like a Venn diagram, we've got two sets of data we're working with. We have our temp table, approximately 50 rows right now, and then we have our final states table with zero rows of data. Anywhere that they match up, it's going to be an, in, an update. Anything that temp has but states does not becomes an insert, and then the reverse, of course, is a delete. So these are our three use cases, and if we can get SQL to implement the insert, update, and delete, that Venn diagram will overlap fully, and we can go ahead and merge the data and synchronize what we have in the temp table into our final. So when we look at the SQL code, I want to think about that Venn diagram that we're doing an insert first to add the primary key where it's missing. In our case, the name of the state is the primary key. So we're going to insert into our final table the primary key where it's not found. So anything that temp has, the final table is lacking, we want to insert and populate that primary key. Now, of course, the reverse is to delete from the final table anything that we see which the temp table does not have, which is why we have the not in states temp. So we insert what's not in the final, we delete what's not in the temp. Pretty easy. Now, the third piece is to go ahead and update and populate those additional fields where the primary key matches. So down here, what you're going to see is t1 equals t2.name. Table 2 is what we're updating. It's our destination. Table 1 is our source providing the values. And that's why here on the assignments, you're going to see Table 2 is on the left because it's receiving values coming in from Table 1. And the update command executes against Table 2. That's our destination. Table 1 is feeding values. So let's go ahead and execute this one step at a time. We'll run the insert. It added 50 rows which makes sense because our destination table is empty, so it's inserting all primary keys. Now subsequent times that we run the insert, it should do nothing because they're already there. So we run it again, zero rows, run it again, still zero rows. Delete is a cleanup. This happens more long term as extra data is in your final table that's no longer relevant in temp. We'll execute that step by highlighting it. Zero rows affected which makes sense. We don't have any excess rows in our final table because it was empty just a few seconds ago. And then our last piece is to look at update. Now this will populate the abbreviation, population, and capital fields with values from temp by matching up the primary key of name on both sides. So over here if we take a peek at our data, we can see the insert worked because we have name populated on both sides now. And what's next is to take these values and go ahead and populate those fields as well. So let's go ahead back over to our stored procedure. We're going to execute the update portion by highlighting it. 50 rows updated. Now if we run it again, still 50 rows. It's still matching up that primary key. If we refresh our preview, we can now see not only do we have the primary key on both sides, but we also have the additional fields which happened with the update. So we did an update times 50 and we had an insert over here that occurred 50 times for the primary key. Altogether, 
now the tables match. Everything the temp table had is now in our final table. And you can execute this very simply by running exec sync F5. And you'll see insert zero rows, delete zero rows, updated 50 because it's already there. Now if I ran a delete star from states, that's going to go ahead and drop all 50 rows. Just to confirm, we'll do a select. Our states table is empty. It has nothing. Our temp table is populated. It has all of that rich information. And we want to take everything out of temp and bring it over to our final table. How can we do that? Simply type exec sync to execute your stored procedure. It'll tell you it inserted 50 rows, deleted nothing, and updated 50 rows. Refresh our preview, and we can now see that the data matches on both sides. So that's how we can synchronize two tables by using SQL Server stored procedures. Thanks for watching.